recording in progress. Okay, so today's presenter is Eric Branner, who we all know. I'm going to read you his bio. Um, so, Eric Branner is a guitar teacher and the CEO founder of Bonds, a third generation music educator, the owner of Black Forest Music School and author of The Black Forest Guitar Companion. He's taught millions of people to play guitar through lessons in his YouTube channel. In 2016, he founded the technology company Fonz to automate the business operations of his music school. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> he received funding, built a team of engineers and designers, and launched in late 2016. Since then, Fonz has extended their reach to many knowledge and appointment-based businesses, such as tutoring, coaching, wellness, and training. Bonds currently manage, manages over 2,000 lessons and processes over $1, $1 million in transactions each month. That's a big difference. That's 25,000 lessons, too. 20? Oh, no! That's okay. I, I can do it. <laughs> lessons and processes over $1 million in transactions each month. Eric is passionate about working to elevate the knowledge sharing industry's level of professional compensation, operation, and image. He's the immediate past president of the Seattle Music Teacher Association, speaks regularly at colleges and events, and has appeared over on over 20 podcasts, and still teaches 20, 12 to 15 private students each week. He lives in Seattle, Washington, with his wife, Allison, children, Edie and Huck, and dog, Happy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. As in people, is it okay if I'm this far away if I take my mask off? Is it gonna be? Yes, yes. If someone leaves, I'll put it back on. Hey, hello, it's so good to be together. Wow. It's been so long since we've been here, and this place looks beautiful. And gosh, I feel like this is the first this is the first moment of being in front of people or with people since it's been two years, right? Was that correct? We had our Oh my gosh, you all have masks on. So what we want to do, because I've realized this, because if I try to be funny, I'm not going to know if, if it works. So I'd like to, can we smize a little bit? Yeah, so it's good. Yeah. Or just, yeah, make some noise or something. That's great. So uh, I'm really delighted to see everybody. I've really missed everyone. Uh, and it's great to be here. I, I prepared this PowerPoint uh, for, uh, for today. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have just been seeing so many. We presented, we watched so many screen presentations. I was like, we're going to just be authentic and organic today. And we're not going to use the screens, which is going to be great. So I was like, so I'm going to do note cards. So I made note cards for my presentation. I was like, I can't read anything that I wrote because my eyes have gotten so bad since last year. I don't have reading glasses yet. So uh, this is truly going to be just an organic experience. So uh, yeah, who knows what could, what could possibly happen. So uh, before I get started, I just wanted to say, wow, what a trip it's been. And coming back together just makes you realize what we've, how much we've all been through, right? And, and how much of an experience this has been and how resilient all of you have been, all of we have had to be, uh, and you know, it's just, it's great to see everyone. So thanks so much uh, for today's presentation. It's gonna be relatively short because Pam really wants to leave to go to Portland. So she told me to hurry it up. So, um, <laughs> so I respect that, but I was hoping to have time to answer any questions or to hear what you had to say as well, because hopefully uh, my, the title of my speech today is the entrepreneurial independent music teacher. Right, and the the, the subline of that is encouragement, strategy, and what comes next. And what I wanted to share is, hopefully, from my presentation, is that you're going to feel really encouraged about what you've been doing, right? And how awesome you've been through this time we just went through, and and what's coming next. I also uh, I'm going to be what I what I'll be talking about. I hope that you feel inside like, oh, that's something I already do. Right, and that's the goal. Is that what we're talking about? It's like, oh, I'm already doing this, and maybe there's an area that I can lean into more. Okay, so that's kind of the goal, and, the, and then we'll look at kind of the long-term outlook as well. So, a, a little bit about me uh, that uh, Katie did a great job, uh, <laughs> and I appreciate that fabulous introduction. But uh, yes, I'm an independent music teacher. I teach here in Seattle. I'm part of this organization, and you know, my grandfather 
was a lifelong music teacher as well. And he was a, a, a really great fixture in the Shenandoah Valley. He was a concert classical pianist. He was also the big band director at the local high school, kind of like out of the Norman Rockwell painting for his entire career. And he was fabulously well-dressed. And he had his kind of heyday in the 40s and 50s. He had a big band. And I grew up seeing him as a child as this, like seeing a music teacher being just the center of a community, right? And he was so handsome and he had, he was dashing and he had great clothes. He drove one of those Jeeps with the wood sides, right back in the day. And, you know, he loved to say, my Jeep, he'd drive a telephone pole and he smoked a pipe. And when I walk down um, downtown Broadway, now I go to the local music store and I go home to visit, you know, people will stop me. The owner of the store will be like, oh my gosh, your grandfather taught me. And he smoked a pipe in his, in his lessons. And I remember the busts that he had in the studio. And so I grew up with this image of what being a music teacher looked like and how important they were. So that's what leads me here today. And uh, it got me into teaching. And I've also always been very entrepreneurial and very interested in business. So seven years ago, yes, I founded a technology company with some other people which has been a fabulous experience. It started out as a way to, uh, I saw a big issue in two points with how our businesses ran, right? And how our businesses ran in the communities and how I'm like here in Seattle, I've got all these very affluent students and they didn't have time to pay me, right? So anyway, the, the bottom line is we built, it's a scheduling and payments platform, it's Essence. Uh, and we've been working on that for the last seven years, but the journey of that, has been really interesting. One is I've been able to put together a team of 15 people, raise venture capital. You know, I, I had this always saying, I'm like, I can play a Bach few on the guitar. I can do a tech company. Like, what's the big deal, right? And, you know, it is really hard, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's when someone's like, oh, I'm gonna build an app. It is a, it's a challenging thing, but a couple of things have, one is I've learned a lot more about the broader spectrum of business. And the second thing is we quickly realized that when we started Fonz, you know, Fonz means wellspring or fountain in Latin. Right. And that was where the name came from. If we were quickly realizing that there was a lot more than music teachers to do this type of work, such as academic tutors, uh, personal trainers, wellness professionals, life coaches. We've got a ton of dog trainers. Right. That's a big thing that use this thing now. And so we were able to learn from them and right and see what these other type of people did. So in that experience, one of the things I've done is I'm a talker. I love to talk to people. Right. And I love to meet people is I've gotten to meet thousands of people that run these types of business that are either just like ours or similar to ours or different enough, but close enough that the operational structure is really similar. And I've got to learn a lot from them. And th this is kind of where my, my, my topic came up is I started to realize uh, that there's, when you look at the top one to 5% of business owners, these are like independent music teachers or tutors or trainers, people that are like the real centers of their community, kind of like my grandfather was. They have a few things that they all do, right? And over time, and you meet 10 and 100, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the thing that they're doing that's very similar. Now, maybe you all have Facebook or Instagram or something. I'm sure in your feeds, you have all these ads for coaches that are like, oh my goodness, sign up here and we're going to get you you guys do see these, right? Where you're like, you'll get 10 students every month. Do I just see these because I click on them or something? But uh, there's a whole there's a whole industry of people that are now coaching to be like, this Facebook ad strategy and you'll have 500 students every month, which is interesting. This is my topic is marketing. And what we're gonna talk about today is a marketing flywheel, right? A marketing flywheel for independent music teachers. Now this, this relates and applies to anything, but it's really, I've honed this in for what we do, right? And as marketing has shifted and the broad spectrum of marketing has shifted uh, across multiple industries, you all are all really good at it, right? And that's the thing that I've learned. And as I talk to people that work in other verticals, other industries, other businesses, is what we do inherently as heart centered centers of our community. That's what all companies want, right? And so that's why I want you to feel really encouraged about what we're going to talk about today. So if anyone has any questions while I'm talking about this, please feel free. Like, I'm going to try to avoid using like big marketing slang, like CPC, PPC, RO, you know, we're going to try to keep it to where it's much more high level. And hopefully when you leave, you feel encouraged and you feel like there might be some things that you can, you can lean into. Okay. So I do have this, but I'm not going to use it because I can't really see anything. So, so we're going to start out today with uh, the idea of what a marketing flywheel is. You guys know what a flywheel is? 
Okay, the concept of a flywheel, maybe you can think of like a rowing machine. Uh, a flywheel is, is uh, it's a physics term where you've got basically a wheel going that takes a lot to get going, right? And the first time you push it around, it takes a lot of force, a lot of energy. But as it gets momentum, it's much easier, right? So what we're gonna do is we're looking like, wow, what are the things that keep our marketing going? And so first off, what does marketing mean to an independent music teacher? Like, does any, like, what do you, when you think of marketing, which hopefully you do at some point, I mean, you're new to the city, so I hope you definitely are. What does marketing mean to us? Anybody want to Okay, well, sure. Even at a more basic level. When we're marketing, what are we trying to do? We're doing what? Sell ourselves, our service, get students. We're trying to get students. That is marketing for music teachers. There's, and so we, can't, we don't want to get any further away from that. Marketing as a music teacher means any action you do that has people bring, that has people come in your door, right? Now, when you look, we're not going to talk anything outside of this purvey of marketing. Because above marketing, we have brand. Below marketing, we have sales. Below sales, we have operations, which is what I'm really passionate about. But today we're talking about marketing, which is that idea of how to get people coming in your door constantly and consistently. So great. What are some ways that we can market? Just off the top, I'll go first. Facebook ads. What's another way that we can market our service to get new students? Website. Website. What else? Referrals. Referrals. Word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Any others? I think it's belonging to an organization like this and working with other Yeah, the SMTA that sends out a lot of referrals. Yeah, professional organizations. That's really good. Volunteer. Volunteer being in your community, right? This is marketing. Uh, at a higher level, you could say, yes, there's Google ads. There's people that do that incredibly well, right? Uh, there's people that do a million dollars a year of lessons through just Google ads with one thing that's called a channel, right? We're not going to talk about any of those today. Facebook ads, Google ads, building a YouTube channel, uh, writing a book, having a website, SEO optimization, having an email list. These are called email or marketing channels, right? And if we were talking to, you know, if we were talking to like a startup thing, that's what they want to talk about, how to optimize your SEO with an email optimization campaign for greater ROI, but all those things don't really, they don't really hold up as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sustainable, authentic marketing strategy that uses none of the things we just talked about. The closest thing would be referrals or word of mouth, but we're going to really, we're going to flesh that out to where, because uh, many of you probably already do this, many of you probably just have the phone ring, right? I know I have the phone ring. I have three or five people usually a week or a month at least, you know, where I haven't been, I've been full for 15 years. But if I, I was talking, do you all know who Tim Totham is? You know, the top music, he's a, he's a blogger and a podcaster. He has this, this, this great organization. I was, I was on his podcast last month. We were talking about uh, every, so before the pandemic, every year I did a thing called Camp Ram, where I would take my top 15 or 18 high school students and we'd go up into the mountains and I'd rent out this Ponderosa Lodge and it'd be co-ed and it would be amazing. And for a week, we'd turn that, that lodge into a recording studio. And the kids would play music from all day long, every day. We'd cook meals together, we'd go on adventures, we'd play concerts. And it was awesome, right? And it was, you know, I, I picked the kids up at Numos uh, at the Loading Dock, which is a bar, a club on Capitol Hill. And we'd load in the van, and I'd be like, the Eric Branner camp songbook or rule book was there, and it was a thick book, and every page was printed the exact same way. Each page said, I will not, I did use the expletive because it was important, I will not effing ruin Eric Branner's life. <laughs> and each kid had to read that out loud before that. I was like, you do whatever you want, just don't ruin my life, please. And they never did, right? It was amazing. <laughs> I took this like co ed group of high school kids up <laughs> in the mountains every year. And it was always great. I mean, we did. We had a tree fall on our van one time during a freak storm, and there was the fires and stuff. But aside from that, it went really well. Uh, but what this this moment during the camp one time is, is we're just coming up with ideas of what the kids can do. And one of the things I was like at that time, you all probably know my kids, Huck and Edie, 
Huck was probably three and Edie was probably eight, and they were both very involved in the happenings of the camp. And one of the assignments for each day was to say, okay, kids, nine o'clock tonight, I want a two or three part harmony, a cappella piece, your choice. You have to, we're going to time you to see how fast, how quickly you can put Huck and Edie to sleep. Right. And for some reason, they were just like, this is awesome. And at, you know, nine o'clock, we tuck the kids in the bed, light candles, and there'd be 17 kids surrounding this bed, quilted in. And then they'd, as I went down to, they'd start singing these songs and they got down to like 45 seconds. Right. And the kid, I mean, it was amazing memory. And I, I was trying to find video of it. So it's like one of those, it's on some drive somewhere. And uh, I couldn't, but I would have, hopefully, I'd, live somewhere but that moment for some reason i got more students from that moment than any ad campaign i've ever run than any anything i've ever done kids like went home and told their parents about it and something it triggered in their parents where they couldn't stop talking about that it wasn't even there was many events like that within the camp there was many moments that were really beautiful but that thing of all these kids doing an acapella piece singing for my kids and putting them to sleep and timing. I mean, my phone was ringing forever. It, I mean, it's for so long that story still gets told. And that was like the first year I did it. That was like 10 years ago. now, And I think that is marketing, right? And so the very first rule of every awesome provider, regardless of what they're doing, whether it's a personal trainer or a music teacher, is you see them doing great work. And to me, that's my great work is I can come up with things that get kids really engaged that their parents want to talk about, right? And that's been my thing since day one, is I have a really fun time teaching music. I love teaching music. It is my brand to take kids through the formative years, right? To give them transformative experiences. That's what great work is, right? And there are many ways that you can have a transformative experience, you know, and there's this, this becomes what our brand is, right? And so the first rule of, of marketing as a strategy, right, as a way to have a successful business is to do great work, right? So hopefully, I bet everyone here is thinking to themselves, oh yeah, I have this moment. I have many of these moments where, yeah, people call me or I showed up for this thing and then that's where I get more students from. Again, this applies to anything, but it's the core. And it's frankly, you know, there are many people that we run across that aren't inspired by their work, right? That have lost the gratitude for how awesome it is to do what we do. And that's something they need to lean into or they can't be successful, right? And so from that great work, from that, you know, being inspired from doing things that people want to talk about, the next piece is you go with community, right? And this is, this is the deal is, you know, you've got this great work and a community will naturally come from it, right? And at first when you're in a new town, you're not gonna have a community yet, yet. And so you focus on that great work and you focus on finding people that will talk about you and investing everything you can into your students, to their success, to showing up to their recitals. You know, go and fix the PA at your student's recital and stand up when it doesn't work and turn, show them how to turn the mic on. And you'll get phone calls from that Right. Uh, for me, my entire marketing budget as a music teacher for as long as I've taught was in one thing. And I don't know if y'all can see this. Um, and I'll walk it around later, but here's a picture of my, my kids. You probably can't see that from there, can you? I didn't. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this out in a second. But you know, my my recitals are called the guitar barbecue, right? And but the first year I did a recital. You know, one kid showed up who's now a a, a bassist for the Seattle Symphony. Uh, no, but like two other kids showed up, three kids showed up the first recital I ever did. It was so depressing. And the second recital I did, I bought all these drinks and I thought it was going to be great. No one showed up. Second year, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do what my mom would do. I'm going to have a barbecue. Everybody's invited. Just show up. It's going to be outside. And see what happens. 200 people show up. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like 100 pounds of pulled pork I made. And it's all gone. And that became the guitar barbecue. Signs were made. T-shirts were made kids were allowed to bring their friends, right? That was it, you know, that was my marketing budget for the year. And I've, you know, I've always had a waiting list, right? And it's all based out of that community that was built from it. People would come to the guitar barbecue, people would share videos from the guitar barbecue. Uh, that one moment 
in the weeks that would follow, in the months that would follow, all the way around the year until the next time I did it again, I would get phone calls, right? So I was doing what I felt to be very great, unique, authentic work to my personality, right? And that's what hopefully you're thinking about yourself. What's my personality, right? You know, can my kids win competitions consistently? Can I take them to that great level? Can I just bring them great joy in their heart and their playing? What is my thing that I lean into that I do well? How can I build a community around it, right? And I love this because right now, everybody in our space is trying to sell a course or they're trying to market themselves internationally on the internet, right? They're in a moment of thinking, oh my gosh, I can scale. I can sell a thousand courses. And there are people that are doing this, right? There are people that are making a lot of money selling piano courses, right? You're probably seeing those on, do y'all use social media? Like, do you guys see stuff like that? Yeah, like the ad feeds of piano courses. The people like ourselves, this is our time to lean into our communities because parents are desperate for their kids to have and themselves to have real life experiences, to be with trusted mentors, to be with people that they think are awesome. So our moment is amazing right now, and it's going to be for a long time. And because we're in our communities, we're centers of our communities, and that's what the whole world desperately needs. Right, so this marketing flywheel is kind of taking off. We find our great work, we're leaning into it, and from that great work, we get a community built around it. People talking about us, people showing up to our stuff, people that want to support us, which this takes us to the third, and I think the most important piece of a marketing strategy for an independent music teacher. And I have, I worded this six or seven different ways, and uh, you know, if the MTNA police come in and get me, take me away. I'm willing, I'm willing to just throw it all down at this moment, but I think I'm pretty safe. I also had a couple jokes I was trying to make where I was like, okay, everybody, tell me, everybody raise your hand and tell me how much you're currently charging for lessons, just to see what Kathy and Will would say. And, uh, and I was like, just kidding, I know we can't do that. But then, but then I was like, you know what, it's been, we've been through enough, and I'm like, we don't really need to have any practical jokes. We'll save those for March, maybe April. Or, wait, where are we now? April. We're in April. Oh my gosh, it's April. <laughs> <laughs> so the third piece of this marketing flywheel of this business strategy is to let your community support you, right? And that is what I, I think that's the most important piece is you've done this great work that you believe in. You've built a community around it. Your community of people is most likely professionals. What we do is culture. We sell culture. We sell happiness. We sell excellence, right? These are the things that we do. The people that are hiring us, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they work in technology. They have a different relationship to money than most of us grew up having. And if we're lucky enough to know these people and understand, they appreciate a professional relationship, right? And so another way of work, what I'm trying to say is that out of the well over a thousand music teachers that I've sat down with and been able to say, you can charge a lot more than what you're charging. I don't even know if you need to know what that is. I just know that you can charge more, right? Um, that is a marketing strategy because if I take two teachers and put them side by side with the same website, the exact same skill set, same clothes, same attitude, everything exactly the same, and one of them charges twice what the other one does, categorically, 100% of the time, the person who charges more will get more students. And my experience for this was very personal in that right before Edie was born, I had a fabulous studio downtown. I've been teaching for 10 or so years. Allison was running my studio, we were very happy. And I was ready to go get an MBA or go to law school as I'd always planned to do. I was like, well, either get my master's in class performance, get, you know, do the doctoral thing. I didn't want to go into academia. I was like, oh, it's time. I'm going to get an MBA or go to law school and see what happens. I was ready for that next progression because I was getting ready to start a family. And I had this, and I, and I do, I need to show you, I'm going to walk this around and show you these pictures. I had a student at the time, his name was Bryce, and he was a legend in Seattle. He knew everybody that started every company basically in Seattle. He was an architect, and I, I started teaching him right around his 60th birthday. And, uh, oh my gosh, we had so many wonderful adventures together. And I was like, you know, Bryce, I'm kind of out. I'm, I'm, I'm off to other things. And he's like, what are you talking about? And then I was like, dude, I'm starting a family. Like, it's time to like... I got to do this, you know, and you know, Allison's acting career is doing well. And one of us needs to probably have like a straight day job. 
And he's like, dude, just double your rates. And I was like, this, and this is 2005. This is before anybody was doing this. And I was like, I am not doing that. And he's like, dude, look at your student roster. Like these people are, these are like, look at these people. No one's going to care. In fact, everybody's going to want to support you. And I'll, and he's like, just try. And so I did. And I very reluctantly doubled my rates in 2005. This is before anybody was doing it. And because I know that's a thing now where people are trying to elevate this, this profession that we have. And so I did it and waited for the response. And everyone said, oh, cool. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? And then I mean, it was a big deal then. And suddenly at this time, I was making a great living like five weeks later. And I was like, I guess I won't leave because this is the money that I was hoping to make with an MBA. And then something else happened that became very weird, which is my phone started ringing off the hook. And it had, and I was early in that. I was charging a lot more than the people that I'd studied with people that were really well-known. I was referring students back to them because I was charging them because the majority of people that we are talking to in our community, they have no way to judge us. They don't know, right? They, they don't know what they don't, they, they're going to learn culture. They're trusting you to teach their children themselves culture. You know, and if you give them two options, right? They're gonna, they're gonna generally often use this concept called perceived value, right? And that's how the relationship will begin. This is the part of the flywheel that is, is critical for marketing. And so you're not doing it because you're trying to be greedy. You're not doing it because you're trying, because it's the right thing to do because we're professionals, right? And like we do just as impactful work as our lawyer or doctor buddies, right? We're doing it because it, it allows people to feel good about supporting us, right? They know. And so it's a vibe, right? Where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm doing great work. And I'm going all these people around me that like, you know, they show up for me and they support me and they love me. And when I ask them to support me, they're wanting to do it because they want me to keep doing this work, right? This is the flywheel. And once the flywheel is running, that's marketing. Right. And if you haven't, I mean, if you haven't read the book, This is Marketing by Seth Godin, you know, it's, it's a great rec because this is the direction that marketing is going in. Right. Is that you are trying to be authentic because people, there's enough noise that people can see when you're not being real. Right. And, and there's people that there's always going to be slimy people out there. There's always going to be people trying to rip people off, but people can sense authenticity. Right. And people can sense care and they can sense they can sense compassion and they want to support it because it's noisy and it's hard to come by. And uh, so anyway, it's it, it's that to me is what I've observed. Uh, I've seen people have tremendous success with it. Right. I have not seen people um, and I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I know people that have been trying desperately to see what that ceiling might be for what they could charge and still keep getting more students. And I see people not being able to find it, right? And because it just, it just, it, it all informs itself. I'm feeling good in my heart about the work I do. I'm making a living. I was able to buy a house. I did better work, right? Because I was healthy. I had health insurance, you know, whatever. All these things allow us to go deeper into being ourselves. And the people that are doing it are thriving. And the people that are doing it are going to thrive for at least the next decade, right? Because so many people are putting their energy into scaling into the digital realm, which isn't really where people want. It's easy, but, and it looks enticing, but it's not where pe people want community and people want real life. And we are like the people to give that, right? We're music teachers, we're the, we're the center of it all. And so we make magic happen. So that is, that's the marketing flywheel. Before I leave the marketing flywheel and uh, I want to talk about the strategy, of it, which is that hopefully, and maybe I'd love to hear what you have to say and what you think about it, is that you might feel really strong in a certain way. Like you might feel like, you know what? The truth is I, I have felt really bogged down. In my work, I haven't practiced as much. I haven't created as much. I haven't been able to give as much to my students. I'm just trying to survive. You know, I forgot. I didn't know if I was going to be able to talk to you all today. I was like, wow. If I have a panic attack, I know you all well enough, and I'm just going to all breathe together for like five minutes. <laughs> and uh, like, who knows, right? So it's, it's a tough time. So finding one of those areas, you can play with it, right? You can play with your 
asking your community to support you, play with your perceived value, right? You can, you can adjust those numbers just for new people, what you advertise, and see what happens. I know that categorically, every single person that I've talked to in the last seven years that I've talked to and making a significant increase in what they ask their community to support them in. I can say that. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Um, 100% of them, never, ever, ever have they come back and not said, wow, I can't believe how that worked for marketing. Not only did no one care, it's that first time when someone calls, you get scared, you go, I can't believe I'm about to tell them what I charge, right? You tell them, they go, oh, okay. In the last two years, I still, even though I can't take a lot of students right now, I only teach like 10 or 12 students a month right now or a week, uh, I still meet with them to see if it's a great fit and then to help distribute them to other teachers. Uh, when I do, in the last, well, I guess it's in the last five years, I've had one person bulk at my prices who was the CFO of a national health insurance company. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're the one that, I was like, of course. I was like, no, we're not working together. I'm not even referring you, my friends. Like, like, are you kidding me? Like, no, thank you. So, uh, but, but I want to address something that I think is really important, which is equity. And this is the pushback that whenever I, I talk on this topic, they're like, oh, what about the equity? You know, what about that? You just priced yourself. No, that is the whole reason to do this. If we are doing great work, and if we are being supported by an ever-growing community, you can money never becomes a thing that keeps you from teaching a great student, right? Because you're like, I'm taken care of, right? I'm good. So yeah, I want to work with you and you want to work with me, we can work something out. And you both feel good about it. So really, this is actually a path to equity. Like when you put your oxygen mask on, right? It increases your studio size, it makes you happier. It allows you to do greater work. It allows you to distribute your services more equitably. So that is what I have to share today. And I, I'm sure I have uh, other things I forgot because I haven't looked at any of my stuff or my note cards I couldn't read. But I think I got like the, the point across. So I'd love to hear if anyone has thoughts or questions or maybe would just want to share a moment that, that maybe something resonated with them. If not, that's cool. Pam, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I've used bonds for a long time, and Eric was one of the people to like really convince me to like charge an appropriate rate. And it took me a couple tries, but yeah, I had it recommend. <laughs> <It's, laughs> I just bought a home. Yeah. And um, as like a single millennial, He's never bought a home before and don't, doesn't have help. So, which is not ever something I thought I would be able to do. Um, or at least not until like, I don't know, it was very old or I moved to like Arkansas or something. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's important to talk about it because it's not, it opens up the possibility of this like wonderful work. To more people. So, yeah. And, and Katie is a great example because Katie came out of the gates with a fabulous energy and building a great community and was open to doing things differently, right? Which there is a lot of, you know, in, in this field, we have a lot of room to doing things differently. And the people that come in and do that with an open mind and that community swarms to them. And I'm sure your phone rings, right? And I'm oh. sure. Oh, yeah. It does. And I actually, like, I don't even have enough people to refer to in my area. Like, whenever somebody emails me and I tell them to check the SMTA site, they're like, well, nobody on there has any room either. So it's, it's work that, like, people want more of. So I don't know. We have, we do important work that people want, really, really want, and are happy to pay lots of money for. So. And that's your marketing. Like that's the that's the, the real piece of this is that the, this is mar it's it's another thing too, which my life work has become elevating this industry and not just ours, but the people that are purveyors of knowledge of culture. Our country is way too dumb. I'm so sorry, but like these last ten years of seeing how being stupid is like has been 
like, oh, this is amazing how dumb we are and the bumper stickers we see. I am like, people like us need to be out there convincing people that it's cool to not be an idiot. I'm so sorry to be negative. I try to never be negative, but like, there's just, there's certain things that's like, our work is very critical to the fabric of the world moving forward. And I really believe that, right? And I, the more that I do this, having tried to leave this field and then realizing how much I love it, you know, being pulled away from teaching as much as I was enabled, because I wanted, I needed the universe to give me something different. I was ready to use my mind in a different way. And I needed this moment to start a technology company. And that, that came, I, it came up as an opportunity and I really jumped at it. I'm glad I did. And from day, you know, day 300 after the first year of doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait until I can go back to teaching full time. <laughs> right because that's like this work is so impactful and it's so beautiful and it's so meaningful and you know my you know orlando cole is one of my heroes he's one of the founding uh members of the uh, curtis cello or, or curtis string quartet he taught a curtis to his 103 you know i met him at my best friend's wedding he was 99 he was still in the faculty he was still teaching and i was like man that's the life you know yeah he's teaching out of his apartment um and one of the greatest schools in the world and students love him and he's full of life. And there's not a lot of jobs that, that people want to do that. A lot of my friends and professional researchers are just working to retire. And I've always thought that's so lame, right? Like the, why do your life's work to be something just to get it over with so you can go sit on the beach somewhere. So. They may have like an awesome story of something that they did or that they, as you put this in your mind of like, wow, this is my market. I'm doing my thing. I don't need to click on that Facebook ad for how I can generate 12 leads a month using YouTube ads. Kathy. I just want to say how I think uh, somebody said volunteering, and I said being in this organization is good marketing too. I think when you volunteer with somebody on a project, and you see that that person is responsible and follows through and is the time, whatever those kind of things that you feel like you get to know them and so then when you do have somebody call and they want lessons and you can't take them got to know because we're in in addition to being independent touch our own we don't work a lot with other people we work with our students but to get to know what another teacher's personality is like, you're going to find it in an organization. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of a bigger, like the mushrooms under the ground, they all connect and talk with the trees and everything. Okay, I got one. Susan, last year, no, I got one for you. You know, we all saw Suzanne on TV last year. Yeah. Sing about City Council. Yeah. Yeah. I teach your students and they were all talking about it. They thought it was the coolest shit that you were doing that. And I was like, <laughs> that is a marketing moment. That is being authentic. We know exactly who you are. You're building brand. And it's like, you're just being yourself. And that's the thing is like, is that is you can't fake it. You can't fake moments of being real. And everyone's trying to, right? And everyone wants to, but you can't. These are moments. Grace Ann Cummings knew, I wish she was here. She's putting together her uh, her kitchen and putting together cabinets. I saw her post on that. I was like, man, I would definitely take the lessons. <laughs> like, look at that. I cannot believe what she's doing. She's so strong. She's so committed. She's so passionate. Um, my, uh, aside from the camps and the guitar barbecues and, and stuff like that that I do, that, and, and just being part of this community for a very long time, there is one moment that I will share in my career that happened very long time ago, this kid's out of college and now he's an adult. I showed up to a guitar lesson in Madrona. It's a really nice neighborhood if you haven't been there before. And I showed up the lesson and on the front door, kid sitting on a stoop, bawling his eyes out. So the world was got curly blonde hair. And I was like, you know, mom's coming out with her bag, granddad's there who is a doctor. Gabe had been playing on, on Lake Washington and gotten biggest splinter in his foot of all time. And they were on the way to the ER because the doctor grandfather couldn't pull it out. And I was like, you know, like we're canceling lesson today. It's cool. We already paid whatever. See you later, Brandon. I was like, well, I'm already here. So long as long we just hang out for a second. 
So yeah, I sit on the stairs going upstairs with Gabe and come on around. We're talking somehow, I don't know how it happened. 15 minutes later, I dug this splinter out of his foot and it was the size of my pinky. I swear it wasn't that big, but it was really, it was the biggest splinter I've ever seen. He let me pull it out and he wraps his arm around me. And just as he does that, the mom snaps a photo and, and the grandfather's like, my God, how did he do that? I was like, my best friend's an ER doctor. I don't know. And uh, that moment, that mom was a pillar at the Seattle Tennis Club. And that, th that story went through the Seattle Tennis Club. But not only was I a, you know, a child whisperer that could bring a child that was frantic down from the, you know, I mean, all, I don't know what, it was no big deal. It was just a moment. He was ready to have that thing pulled out of his foot, didn't want to go to the ER. And, but the story changed and the story became that I child whispered him down and then somehow <laughs> dug this thing out that the surgeon couldn't do with like, <laughs> And you know, I it was complete, it was ridiculous, but that's the way the story ended up. And who am I to tell parents when they call? Like, I was at the tennis club and I heard from Angela, and I was like, you've got to teach my kid. And I, I mean, when I think honestly about that moment, hundreds of calls came from that moment. And because they still come because she's still at the tennis club. <laughs> and she and that story never really gets old. Parents love those moments. So you know, lean into them, you know, and hopefully when you leave, you probably think as you're driving home, like, I do a lot of really cool stuff. What's an area that I could do more of? Where am I feeling burned out on? Um, you know, and that's, that's awesome. So, would anyone else like to share, have questions? Uh, I have a few questions. Because, I mean, I would be, I, so, I would be happy to take students that can afford my rate, but I haven't ever been approached. But I think that's probably because they find my rate on my website and then they just figure to work elsewhere. So how do you how do you communicate that without people even contacting you to ask? Sure. Them? Yeah. Did, did you want to? Well, what I do is I make it and I think the other thing is for all of us is once our marketing flywheel is running and we have this energy, if we still have energy, is to make the choice to be proactive, right? And, you know, my, my, my kids, I, my, my son is very involved in sports and he's doing very high level basketball at the age of 10, where it's almost weird. Like a lot of practices, a lot of coaching, traveling in Houston. Um, Allison and I are both artists like, oh my gosh, what do we do? This is so weird. How, how do we support this? And it's great because there are so many people that are former NBA players that will like set up at, you know, the, at a community center, right? And do really hard trainings for a pay what you can. So and some, I've been really impressed by how they, how the coaching world works and how it's something I'm learning from right now that I'm really inspired by. You know, I set up a program, you know, speaking of community, I, Gosh, it was a, I don't know if you all remember this, but my studio got robbed and like all my guitars got stolen. You guys remember this story? No. Yeah, I, can't, I, was, I was on the East Coast and my studio, all my surfer, surfboards, all my guitars, all my amps, everything gone. Concert classicals, all gone. Totally stripped clean. And I uh, was obviously really bummed. And I came home from my trip to the East Coast. I was, I was in Virginia visiting. And uh, one of my students' moms was at that time, uh, she was a district attorney and started working with the Seattle Police Department directly. And then I was, show, I was at a friend's house and a hundred people show up at this friend's house. I'd already had a martini. This is back when I had the occasional martini. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I hadn't eaten anything. So it was overwhelming. I didn't know what was going on. And a hundred people show up into this house and they gave me these Texas style checks. And they're like, hey, a hundred of our families were so bummed for you. There's no way for you to track this. We we want to give you enough money to replace anything that was lost. And I was like, I have insurance. It's going on. And they're like, just take it. I was speechless. I didn't even say thank you. I was, I was like, I was like three o'clock the next morning. I was crying in my front yard. I was like, oh my gosh, now I, it hit me. And uh, I felt really, it, it was overwhelming to accept a gift like that. And there was no way to give it back. And so all I could do was buy my dream guitar. And uh, which is what they, wanted how they wanted to support me through that. And so I volunteered my time to pay it off. And so I started a guitar program at Chief Self for a year. And I got guitars for all the kids that did it. And I felt really good about that. 
but it was hard. Like doing equitable work and reaching out takes effort, right? Because you're not having the same kind of parents that are helicoptering their kids in and making them practice, or it's like it is a different energy. And it's important that we do it. Uh, and it's, you know, making space for it because often they'll, they, you're right, they'll look at your website like, oh, or they won't even get to your website. Right, right. Community centers are great because a lot of um, people will lean into that. It's a, it's a great point, though, and it's something we all need to be doing. Because there is like, I mean, music, uh, music looks great, but like, there's this part of, this, I mean, there's many people who probably couldn't afford my rates, but also aren't on free lunches. Yeah, because the um, house in Seattle was eleven billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's a good thing that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, sure. Any other thoughts, questions, funny stories? Curiosities? You're very inspirational. Oh, well, why? Thank you. Very Thanks. Very Thank you. I want to. Um, I want to show. I, I'm going to. I'm going to just. Uh, walk this around, but I'm going to share my favorite quote in the whole world is by Seneca, the Stoic Roman philosopher, and it is the center of kind of my teaching and my uh, just my whole work philosophy, which is happy is the person who can make others better, not merely while in their company, but even when in their thoughts, right? And this one has stuck with me for years, which is like that's what we're doing, right? And that's like the the the, the whole the whole core of this. Uh, if you're interested in this stuff. And you like the idea that I host my community is I come up, it's called Fawn's Family, right? You don't have to use Fawn's or anything to do it, but it's just, it's a Facebook group of really awesome business owners from all over. And anybody's welcome to join it, provided that you're cool and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I encourage you to check it out because it's, 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 I think it's, I'm really proud of it. I think it's a great example of how we've been able to lean into a community to help guide us build a product, which is different than what we're doing as a, as a music teacher but to get that feedback and to, and to grow. So thanks for having me, everybody. It's been really, really fun. And I'm